engage in it god was saying it's a corporate fast every elder has to be part gather children let the children in your home be part of it if they can't even do six to six that is six to twelve or six to ten but let somebody fast in that house can i hear an amen, amen. children nursing babies let the bridegroom go out of his chamber don't come and tell me you just wear it so you won't fast leave your honeymoon room and be part of the fast are you clapping for the word the nursing babies now if nursing babies are fasting certain nursing mothers have to fast don't tell me i'm breastfeeding i'm dialing some serious numbers let the bridegroom go out from his chamber and the bride from her dressing room let the priests who minister to the lord all the pastors weep between the porch and the altar let them say spare your people O lord and do not give your heritage to reproach that the nation should rule over them why should they say among the peoples where is their god then the lord will be zealous for his land and pity his people the lord will answer and say to his people behold i will send you grain and new wine and oil and you will be satisfied by them i will no longer make you a reproach among the nations we trust in god that god will give us new wine and new grain and god will not make us a reproach to the world but god will bless and favor our lives so it is it is it's a call for the whole assembly to be deeply involved in the fast and if nursing babies were called upon then certainly instrumentalists have to be part of it now am i communicating if nursing babies and Colombo they know for one God said they should fast. Then you can't come and tell me that I can fast, which means that everybody is involved in this fast. We call it the corporate fast, where God calls the general assembly to seek his face. Tell your neighbor, God is calling you to be part of the fast. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, church. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 13 verse 1 to 3 another corporate fast now in the church that was at Antioch there were certain prophets and teachers Barnabas Simeon who was called Niger Lucius of Cyrene Mane who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. Great prophet, great teachers in the church of Antioch, as they ministered corporately, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted. Praise the Lord. As they ministered to the Lord, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them then having fasted and prayed which means that they fasted twice they fasted the first one god spoke that paul barnabas should be separated for the work and when they separated and they fasted and prayed again and laid hands on them corporate fasting in their sorry every fasting say we are fasting now man yes i said it's a fast for the entire church and everybody must be part of it because i wanted first december this year everybody should come with a testimony you are, you are not saying amen at all uh, listen i sit up there and i counsel people and sometimes god tells us organize this program for them and in the program are all your miracles and most often people with serious problems are people who will not come for programs like this meanwhile they are the people who will be chasing us for counseling most of your answers are encrypted in this program should you take it serious you're not clapping for that so we want to look at the eight benefits you will attract from fasting and that will be done for today eight benefits you will attract when you fast and benefits number one
fasting is God's appointed way of humbling his people to get answers from him when they pray so fasting humbles you when you fast you remain humble when you fast you remain very humble when you fast you remain very very humble and before that i want to talk briefly on pride then i can connect it with humility when you fast a couple of scriptures about pride for whoever exhorts himself will be humbled if you exhort yourself you'll be humbled and he who humbles himself will be exalted so when you fast and fasting humbles you fasting ends up exalting you am i communicating here anyone who exalts himself will be humbled and it's dangerous when god humbles you in fact god humbling you means he's humiliating you because real humility is the attitude of the mind you decide if you we're going to read you see that god will be telling people if my people who are called by my name shall humble it's incumbent on you to humble yourself but if you don't and god decides to humble you he humiliates you so whoever exalts himself shall be humiliated by god but he who humbles himself will be exalted and that was the plight of satan one day he felt i wanted to be like god and the Bible said God humbled him by bringing him down to the earth. Jesus, who was rather like God or was God, thought it not robbery to be equal with him. And he laid himself down even to the point of death. And as a result, God has highly exalted him and has given him a name that is above every name. Which means that if you humble yourself, God exalts you above everybody. May this fast bring elevation and exaltation into somebody's life. If you believe it, clap and scream amen like you mean it. James chapter 4 verse 10. Humble yourself. This is God who humble you. You have to do it. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Where is the sight of the Lord? Especially in church. Where two, three gathers together in his name. God is there in the midst of them. So when you come to church, you humble yourself in the house of God, in his presence. When you are in your room waiting on him, fasting and praying, kneel down before him, humble yourself before him. When you do that, he will lift you up. Can I hear an amen? First Peter 5 verse 5 to 6. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourself to your elders. The younger people, submit yourself to your elders. Don't come to church, come and meet people in the department and then within two, three, five days, one week, one month, then you want to despise the people you came to meet in the department. Even if you are extra gifted, you came to meet people, value them. Submit yourself to elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. Humility must be like a cloth. You should clothe yourself with it. There are some people when you see them, they are some people you see them, you should clothe yourself with humility. I will say, hello, am I preaching the word? Clothe yourself. There are some people, you, as soon as you see them, you see that, ah, mommy, where they are brain, was it? even how they are demeanor, their persona. There are some people, too, when you see them, you see that, hey, I could be a hand time where they are watching it. Maybe we be a human name. Hallelujah. Are we, are we clapping like that? Amen. So it says that clothe yourself with humility, for God resists the proud. That's a serious matter. Also, come here. Come. God resists. Say God resists the proud. Now, for instance, you want to get into prosperity. You want to have a child. You want to marry. You want to have a job. But you are very arrogant and proud. God resists you. You can never have that job. Now, if God decides to resist you, it's a, it's a serious thing. Because if God be for us, who can be against us? If God be against you, God resists. Now, me cry, me resist. What is he saying? Now, am I communicating? Because I can pray some serious prayers. And 
this is not broke man. God resists the proud. This year, I don't want God to resist any of the, my, my members. That's why we want to fast too. So that the fasting will keep us humble. For us to get access into our blessing. Which means that humility gives you access. Clap for Jesus. <laughs> Blessed are the meek. For they shall what? Inherit the earth. Which means that if you are meek, if you are humble, you inherit stuff. You have access into things. And I'm saying your fasting gives you humility. Your fasting makes you humble. Praise the Lord. I'll still come there, but I'm just talking about pride, Kakra, because it's a Ghanaian thing. It's a Ghanaian thing. Psalm 138, verse 6. You should be shocked. This one, I want all of us to read it. Though the Lord is on high, yet he regards the lonely. But the proud, he knows from afar, which means that the proud will be far from God. That's why he drove Satan out of heaven, very far from him. So when you are proud, you can't have the presence of God. Because when you are far from God, you don't have the presence of God. So proud people, God shuns their company. That, that, that's very serious. Hallelujah. So God is far from the proud. If I proud chorister, you will sing by the presence of God will not come because his presence is far from you. If you are a proud pastor, when you stand to minister, the presence of God can't come because God is far from you. If you are a proud Christian, his presence, you see, instead of feeling your presence, no, it's because you are proud. So God is far from you. But fasting brings you humble and brings God close to you. Can we clap for that? Now, scriptures. Ezra 8, 21 to 23. Then I proclaimed the fast. That's Ezra. He proclaimed the fast. There at the river of Ahava. That we might humble ourselves before our God. He proclaimed the fast so that Israel will humble themselves. So fasting keeps you humble. Did you get that? Am I preaching? So fasting keeps us humble. He declared the fast so Israel will humble themselves before the Lord. So the first benefit you receive from your fast is fasting keeps you humble. And I'm saying humility as a way of making you have access in life. And this year we don't want God to resist the proud. So we want to fast so we can be kept humble for certain openings and certain avenues and certain doors to come into our lives. Can I hear a big amen? Somebody clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Psalm 35 verse 13. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer returned into my own bosom. I humbled my soul. I humbled Kalabahaya. I humbled my soul. That is the King James. Eh? Uh, what? What? The, uh, the yeah. The New King James says that I what and my prayer. I humbled myself. But give me the King James, the original King James. I humbled my soul with fasting. I humbled my soul. And in your soul is your will, your mind, and your emotions. So for you to humble your will, that is to submit your will to the will of God. To submit your mind to the mind of God. To submit your emotions to the will of God. You fast. And when you fast, you humble your soul. You humble your will. You humble your mind. You humble your emotions into subjection with the will of God when you fast. So when you fast, your soul is brought under subjection to God's will. This thing like, me pay, me pay, me pay, me pay. when you fast, whoopay is broken and it becomes no more I that live, but Christ that lives in me. You are not clapping at all. Did, did you get that? So fasting, fasting humbles our souls. So David said, I humble my soul with fast. So when you fast, the benefit is that you, you, you become humble. 
Look at people who fast. The way they talk, the way they carry themselves. You see, there's this aura of peace all over the Also, we come be when you fear on fasting. Hello, am I communicating on fasting? So, if you fried rice, you may not so you may be a hallelujah. Shaka Bahaya. Also, be deal be a temp, the din, 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 with you and as on your fasting. People who fast. Now, why a week? Hello. <laughs> and what did anyone do better like? Why, why light? And all you are thinking about is God. So, so fasting keeps you humble. And I'm saying humility as a way of giving you access in this life. Give me Proverbs 16, 18. Okay, one, two, three, go. Pride goes before destruction. And a heart is a hand time home before a fall so when you are proud you'll be destroyed and when you are haughty because will be haughty what you say i'm a soul you'll be destroyed so to fast means that you are avoiding destruction and you are avoiding falling because you become humble if i were you i would choose to fast because this year i would say with me I was saying, no, maybe to me, Is that good stuff? Tell your neighbor you have to fast. Let's call for Jesus. Number two, the second benefit we attract when we fast, we fast to avert God's judgment over our lives and over our nations. We fast to avert. God's judgment. Impending judgment, but fasting averts it or fasting nullifies it or renders it inefficient. 1 Kings 21 verse 22 to 29. I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Bashar, the son of Ahijah, because of the provocation which, with which you have provoked me to anger. Can you imagine? He provoked God to anger. So God said, I'm going to make sure I bring strong judgment on you. And made Israel sin. And concerning Jezebel, the Lord also spoke, saying, The dogs shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Now, the prophet Elijah went to Ahab to prophesy on him that because of the illicit act of you and your wife Jezebel, I'm going to bring distraction on you. And as for your wife, I'm going to make sure that the dogs shall eat her flesh by the wall of Jezreel. The dog shall eat whoever belongs to Ahab and dies in the city. And the birds of the air shall eat whoever dies in the field. But there was no one like Ahab who showed himself to the wickedness in the sun. He says, of all the people who have lived in Israel, there is no one who is as wicked and as bad as, Je as Ahab. Because Jezebel, his wife, stirred him up. And he behaved very abominably in following idols, according to all that the Amorites had done, whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. So it was when Ahab, check this, when Ahab heard those words of prophecy, he didn't behave like the Ghanaian politicians. As soon as he heard the prophetic word, he didn't send for his arrest. Am I communicating here? As soon as he heard the prophetic word that he tore his clothes and put sackcloth on his body and fasted, the king, the president fasted and laid in sackcloth and went about mourning and the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite again saying, See how Ahab has humbled himself before me. Which means fasting brings humility. Because he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the calamity in his days. In the days of his son, I will bring the calamity on his house. Now Ahab had messed up, done all kinds of illicit things, contravening God's decrees, had imported foreign gods, had worshipped other gods, had, had, had gone to marry Jezebel, a witch. 
and God sent the prophet to go and prophesy that because of your illicit act, I'm bringing doom, I'm bringing judgment on you and Israel. I'll destroy you. But the Bible says instantly Ahab, with all his badness, still went and humbled himself and fasted. And when he fasted, the Bible said the thing moved God, and God told Elijah, Go and tell Ahab what I decided to do, I won't do it. I'll make sure I wait till he dies, then I'll bring the judgment on his sons. Innocent people were going to struggle because a man fasted and averted a calamity coming. So I don't know what your fathers did, what your mothers did, what your aunties did, what your great grandfather, great 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 grandfather did that has brought some repercussions on your life it could be that your ancestors were into idol worship they went to fetishism they went to all kinds of fraudulent things and probably your mother was even a witch before she died and she drank the blood of people and all this blood are speaking vengeance or maybe you even did something probably committed even some abortions and did something that is affecting your life god said i should tell you as you fast you can avert I, I thought some good person would clap here. Oh. Kadabahaya. If Ahab, by his father, I can, I can imagine Ahab becoming a prayer warrior. And Ahab praying. And if God heard Ahab's prayer, ah, Pastor Charles, God will hear our prayer. We, we are the righteousness of God in Christ and we have the blood of Jesus washed us clean. We have the Holy Spirit living in us. I'm telling you, this 28 days, our prayers have been answered. We didn't clap at all. Somebody scream yes three times. Jonah chapter 3 verse 5. Still under our fasting, averting judgments and dangers projected against us. You know, you know, Nineveh was a very bad city. The historic background states that they were so wicked that if a prophet even comes to Nineveh, they will hang you. As soon as you say, Thou said the Lord, I pray that Ghana doesn't drift to becoming Nineveh. Where the land abhors anything godly to a point where we want to siphon the blood of the church. And every church is the conscience of a nation. And if you see a people trying to stampede the progress of a church, the nation will go down. And that's very dangerous. America is America because of the foreign missionaries they sent to the world. And that's how God, that's how come God sustains them and blesses them so they can always be a blessing to nations. America is America because they stand with the people of Israel. You can never resist anything godly. You can kick against the gods or the pricks. So Ghanaians must get it. This social media nonsense where Obianya, two cities, Koto, Kredit, and Odin, Kwasiasemu, no social media, no. Listen, let's fear God. Because God is not a toy. And you, the young man, a kind of world, and to be careful how you deal with the things of God because you could attract some repercussions that can affect your children and your children's children's children. Yes, children, I mean, I bought some crown Kasentiano. Nineveh was a very polluted nation. So God sent the prophet jo Jonah to go prophesy against them. He went to town and he saw the illicit act and the way people were indifferent about anything godly. And the guy was like, I'm in too much So he left town, headed for Tashis. It's dangerous when people hate men of God. May we not grow into becoming the people who hate the things of God. And now we read Unity TV. So people celebrate gays, celebrate lesbians, celebrate um, fetish priests, celebrate all kinds of things, and then they, they, they speak against godly things. That's none of it for you. And so Jonah said, I'm not going to be part of all these things. He left town. So God met him somewhere again and said, you have to go back. And it was like, God, you are no you. If I go and preach to these people and they repent, you forgive them. You are a gracious God. You are full of mercy and compassion. And that's who God really is. Can you clap for God? He's so merciful. So Jonah 3, 5 to 10. 
So the people of Nineveh, when Jonah went the second time and preached, the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. Then word came to the king of Nineveh and he arose from his throne and led aside, I think, the kings of the olden days, some must rise from their grave and come and talk to the kings of our world today. The word came to the king of Nineveh and he arose from his throne and laid aside his robe, covered himself with self clothes and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his noble saying, let neither man nor beast, even animals fasted. Let man let neither man nor beast nor herd flock taste anything do not let them eat or drink water but let man and beast be covered with sacrament jesus christ and cry mightily to god yes let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in 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 their hands who can tell if god would turn and relent look at this king and turn away from his fierce anger so that we may not perish then god saw their works that they turned from their evil ways and god relented from the disaster that he had said he would bring upon them and he did not do it and it's believed in history that for for a hundred years nobody conquered assyria because of that fast They're not clapping. So by a fast, you can avert some judgments. And Maza, the world is going to become rough and tougher than last year. From the statistics and from the things we are reading on the net and what we are following, the world is going to be tough because the Isaiah 60 verse 1 prophecy is going to come to pass. Arise and shine for the light has come. The glory of God is risen upon you. Darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness, the, the people. By your light, the church will radiate some light in the midst of the darkness. So all negative things will happen, but you will be exempted. And the exemption will come if you stay in fasting and prayer. God will make sure that you are exempted from impending dangers. People will die, but you will live. People will be sick, but God will protect your life. Not because God is partial, but God is going to make sure that the difference between Goshen and Egypt will be clear. You are not clapping with a resounding shout. So fasting affects. Hallelujah. Clap for that one. Number three. Number three. Am I helping you? Number three. We are looking at the eight benefits of fasting. Number three. Fasting affects disaster. The first one is judgment. The second is disaster. Esther chapter 4 verse 16. You know the story of Esther. Mordecai. Esther's uncle had managed to push Esther through to a point where Esther had become the queen by marrying um, Hazarus. And a certain man called Haman, who hated the Jewish people, had managed to orchestrate some evil against them where the Jewish people were going to be killed on a particular day. And Mordecai came to tell his cousin, that Esther, you are not supposed to sit down. Who knows that God brought you here at such a time as this to stand in the gap for us? So Esther makes sure that you intervene. And Esther said, I cannot go before the king. You see, the, 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 the Persians had a law that when the king sits on his throne until he calls you, you can't come to him. Are you here? Are you here? And the only way you can have access is when you break the protocol and he stretches the scepter. Then it means that he has forgiven you so you can hold the tip of the scepter then you'll be acquitted and discharged from any legislation or whatever that will put you in death and the king had gone to sit down on his throne and esther was like how can i go before the king i'll be killed and Mordecai said you got to go move it go so esther stepped out and as soon as she opened i don't know if you've watched uh one night with the king um yeah so he, he she opened the the, the 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 palace gate 
And as soon as he stepped in, everybody was like, yay, Esther is dead. Then the king straight the scepter and welcomed Esther. In that context, Esther is the type of the church. The king is the type of God. Sometimes the church must break protocols to still have access to God. Are, are you in the house? Unbelievers will not have that kind of access. The unbeliever has only one privilege of praying one prayer for God to hear, and that's the sinner's prayer. Apart from that, any prayer unbeliever prays God doesn't hear. But we have access to approach him in time of need to obtain mercy anytime. Clap for that great privilege. Yes. So Esther told Mordecai, let the Jewish people fast. And whilst they fast, I will go to the king. If I perish, I perish. So verse 16, Esther chapter 4. Go gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My mates and I will fast likewise. And so I will go to the king which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. When I read down, the Bible says she went before the king and the king will come. And to cut long story short, the Bible says the Jewish people were acquitted from that impending danger. So fasting acquits us from disaster. So the enemy wants to kill you. The enemy wants you to have an accident. The enemy wants you to maybe have your, your business destroyed or your marriage disintegrated. But as you fast and you seek the face of God, God by his own auspicious grace can intervene supernaturally and acquit you from a disaster that is projected against you. And so many disasters will come. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run. They will not be weary. They will walk and they will never faint. Come on, clap and celebrate your victory over disaster whilst you fast and seek the face of God. So lift your right hands up. Say, I will fast because my fast will deliver me from every disaster. Can you clap for that one? Number four, we are looking at the eight benefits of our fasting. And now we are on the fourth point. Fasting commends you as a minister of Christ. Your fasting commends you as a child of God. So 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 4 and 5. But in all things, we commend ourselves as ministers of God in much patience, in tribulations, in needs, in distress, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in sleeplessness, in fastings. Paul is saying what really commends a man as a pastor, as a child of God, as a minister of the gospel are these things. Quite unfortunately, in these are times, if somebody wants to be commended as a pastor, they are looking at the coat you are wearing, the car you drive, the iPad you have, the iPhone you have, and how many degrees you have behind your name, and how many countries you have traveled to. That, that is the world's way of defining a pastor. But Paul says that in Christ, these are the things that commend us as ministers of God. Am I preaching the Bible? It says, in much patience, if you are a child of God, what makes us know that this is a child of God is when you have patience. That won't force him, compare Bema by force, and you know by force. Come on, say, Mama, because you don't want to hear that. <laughs> you see some people, and they call a lady, and they say, Bema, I'll be worried. I see Bema, I don't want to worry, no. And sometimes I think we put pressure on people too much. But we will be on our worries. No, we say that Ben Abel worry. And let me say that Ben Abel. And let me say, marriage is not in the supermarket, and you go and choose one. You wait for your own timing. Patience and the guys. You want a lady to propose to her and then she did not accept your proposal. Don't force yourself to try to prove a point. Unpower, 
Otherwise, you go and borrow money you don't have to buy clothes you don't need to please somebody who doesn't care about you. Be yourself. Am I communicating? Is it so? He says, What makes us commended as ministers is our patience, tribulation. Some of you, you just say, What will be the one pebre? One pebre. The beer open already made. Me here, Bema, when he's sick, I want a car, or ten feet is legon. That's good. Yamid the mouth of fine, but Yamid and Farmer no Yamid the Obinswa, or no one started 